And here, of course, was still is one of the few places that you can build straw bale. Out of that, I decided I wanted to do it myself. Welcome to Sawatch County Stories, a podcast of the Northern Sawatch County Library District, where we explore the evolution and history of the land and people of the Northern San Luis Valley of Colorado. I'm Sarah Kane Fry, Director of the Northern Sawatch County Library District. In this episode, local resident Wade Lockhart shares his story on the theme of finding home. In our Finding Home series, folks talk about their housing journey in the San Luis Valley. My name is Wade Lockhart. I live in the Baca. Okay, I'm 65. Uh, My background is uh, jack of all trades. Um, I've lived here uh, for 21 years. Oh, I am connected in many ways with the community um, in heart. I came here as a, an alternative builder, and, uh, and since that time, I've become more involved with projects such as this one. Um, alternative building, of course, sustainability, uh, supporting the community in any way that I feel like I have the skills to do that. I'm still on the Rural Electric Board, yes. I first came to this area as an Outward Bound instructor here in the Sangre de Cristos. And I, I got involved with a straw bale building project because I had some interest in that. And here, of course, was still is one of the few places that you can build straw bale. And uh, so I worked on a project here. Out of that, I decided I wanted to do it myself. So I moved back to Boulder County, which is where I lived, got involved with teaching. Uh, wanting to be a teacher. And I got hired in Sawatch across the valley as a Spanish teacher. And I worked there for one year and decided uh, I wasn't a licensed teacher. It was kind of a, let's see how this goes, curiosity kind of thing. If I like it, I'll go and get my degree and credentials and such. I It didn't work out for me. I found teaching to be a very difficult job. So I went back to building and I uh, moved over here to Crestone to work for a friend. And uh, we weren't building a straw bale house. It was just a conventional house. But he had been, he, I had helped him the year before build his straw bale just for a little while. And then I would get back to Boulder to my regular job, which was at uh, Boulder Valley Schools. I think that was 1994. At any rate, so I, when I got hired to teach over in Sawatch in 2000, uh, after that year, I came back over here to Creston, where he had lived. His name is Ward Olin. He's been here since the, uh, the early 90s, um, which is when I was introduced to the place as an outward bound school instructor. Uh, I came back. I, I, I left my teaching job in Sawatch and came to, to Creston and worked for Ward. And then uh, a close friend of mine asked me to build a house for him, and I built a house for him. And then after that, I started building my own house. A lot of different things happened. (laughs) I started off with building a a garage, which uh, by my good graces, the Property Owners Association allowed me to live in it while I built my house. So I broke ground on the garage in 2009, worked on it through the winter. I was living in a small camper, an unheated camper, and I had a a porta potty Back in those days, you could do that. And then it got too cold, and uh, uh, the same buddy of mine that I uh, would later build a, a house for in Chile, too, hired me to, to remodel a, a place for him in Florida. So talk about luck. I, I got into a nice situation there for the winter and then came back here and did some more work on my garage. And then uh, the following year, I went back to Florida and did another project for him and then came back and did some more work on my garage. And then by uh, 2013, um, I poured the foundation uh, for my house, my straw bale house. So uh, from 2013 until probably 2018, 2019, I was building the straw bale house, still living in the garage. And then 2019, I moved into the straw bale house. 
And of course, money, budgeting was the big thing. That's why it's taken me so long. Doing a lot of it myself takes longer. Paid as I go, I don't have any debts. That was one of the magnets of moving here was that we weren't really, uh, I mean, the Property Owners Association in the Baco was telling us, you know, 18 months to get your house up. But the reality is, and they knew that, I mean, that most people like myself weren't, weren't going to be able to do that. So they have it set up so that you you pay a, a fee, a compounding fee, and it gets to gets to be a substantial sum of money if you're trying to, uh, you know, put that money towards materials. But it's still a way to get through it and do it. They worked with me every six months. I would go before the board and explain, you know, how much further along I was and ask them for uh, another extension. I think I have eight exten- had eight extensions by the time I was done. <laughs> Yeah, eight extensions, so, you know, eight times, six times, six months, you know, every two every year. Well, the finished product, obviously, is very nice. But you're learning as you go. Community, community's helping you out. Not, uh, not only the, the, the people that I had to hire for some things, just the general uh, knowledge of the, that there are other people who have gone the same, gone down the same road, the same path to get get themselves from not having a place to having a place. Well, the, the first thing that comes to my mind was negotiations with the with Property Owners Association. It was stressful having that hanging over me all the time, you know, thinking about, ah, oh, the next, the next um, fine, I called them fines, would be X number of dollars, you know, and you get that kind of wears on you. They didn't slow it down, no, but they kept me on task. They kept me on task. I wouldn't say that was the only thing. I mean, just generally I wanted to be done, you know, not always be focused on that. When I finished my garage, and even during the, the, the four years, uh, five years that I was living in it, um, I realized that the amount of space that I had, which was, oh, I think maybe just under 700 square feet, felt really adequate and comfortable. And the the idea that 900 square feet was the required minimum by the covenants of the Property Owners Association felt like it wasn't really in line with my values in terms of trying to reduce and uh, to have a smaller footprint. And so... In recognizing that, I decided to campaign to reduce the square footage. And um, uh, talking with people, mostly talking with people, it ended, I got it on the ballot for the next election. And it passed to reduce square footage. However, they would not reduce it to... 700 or in my case it was like 688 I don't even know if I would have would have qualified as 700 but my thoughts were is that it would but it it did pass okay it did pass but typically in an election here in the Baca um, ballpark 12 1200 people vote well there was a state law I learned after the fact it passed by a two to one margin among the more or less 1,200 people who voted. Reduced square footage to 700 square feet. But what I learned was that it did not have a quorum. Learning more about that, the quorum requires that at least 51% of the total eligible voters, land property owners, have to approve of it. Okay, well, we've got 3,600 plus eligible voters in the Baca, of whom maybe 1,200 vote every year pretty consistently. So a lot of absentee property owners who don't vote. So for years now, we've had what I consider a lame duck democracy, if you want to call it, but we're, we're unable to amend, improve, basically catch up with the times. If we're talking sustainability, 
A single person does not need 900 square feet. But if we can't change it because of, of the quorum, the issue of the quorum, then what do we do? So I sort of just had to walk away from that. And I resubmitted plans for my 700 square foot garage with an, to, for an addition to put on that. But I didn't, it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. Didn't look right. Didn't feel right. Didn't have the right solar aspect because there was a tree right there where the addition was going to going to be. It just didn't feel right. It wasn't straw bale. It was intended to be a garage. Okay, but like I said, the compromise. You're in there. Everything's great. It's like okay, why should I invest all this time and money and increase my footprint, if you will, when I don't need to do that? Well. Right. It was either do the addition or build the straw bale house. So I sucked it up and built the straw bale house, which is 1,200 square feet. I'm a single guy, 1,200 square feet. It just doesn't feel right. So this is why I'm stepping up now again, because bless your hearts, uh, the Crestone Energy Fair people are looking at that. They're looking at it because now the county is starting to say that the the square footage is an issue we can't have all of these little shacks going up in the county and many of us are seeing it as sort of a step towards gentrification which is kind of a dirty word i mean i used to live in boulder and uh, i couldn't afford to live there anymore this was one of the last great places in colorado where you could build something sustainable you could be creative you wouldn't have tons of fees and well, aside from the POA, but, you know, engineers, you don't have to get an engineer stamp for your house if you're going to do something alternative. Those kinds of things, which make this place attractive. I wanted to I wanted to put something in about that because I think it's real critical in these days, in the times we're living in. Um, in fact, I ran for the POA board two years ago on the same platform, if you want to call it sustainability, and reducing square footage, uh, checking gentrification, putting a check on it, and creating more community and less of this uh, real estate boon or market. Sorry to say that I think the realtors won out in the election. It was close. I didn't lose by much. But nevertheless, I ran because I see the need to uh, get some people on the board on the POA board that are a voice for sustainability, a voice for getting out of this, this rigid status quo. Now we have what I consider, even though there are some alternative homeowners on the current POA board, and I'm not speaking for the county, but just for the, the back of the POA board, they are very, very worried or concerned about, say, for example, a tiny house village. Why can't we do that? Why can't we provide more affordable housing? Like, why can't I build a duplex so that there are two residents on one lot? Why can't I do that? What's wrong with it? Those are the questions. You've been listening to Sawatch County Stories. Thank you to our guest, Wade Lockhart, for sharing his story. This podcast is made possible in part through a generous Sawatch County sales tax grant. Our music was created and performed by Lydia Schultz Sprouts and Rob Treefort with Golden Turtle Sound. If you would like to share your story, have questions, or would like to reserve your spot at an interview event, email Eden. She can be reached at Eden Elderberry at nsclibrarydistrict.org or you can call the Sawatch Public Library at 719-655-2551. For new episodes, to read our blog, or to watch our YouTube channel, check out the Northern Sawatch County Library District website, nscld.colibraries.org.